Hey everyone, I'm Alex and this is Big L Books. Today I'm going to be doing the Future Classics book tag, which is made up of a very thought-provoking series of questions created by Eric Carl Anderson. I have just loved watching people's responses to this tag so far, so even though I haven't been tagged myself, I am of course going to be offering my unsolicited opinions anyway. So let's get to it. Question number one, pick an established classic that you think will still be relevant in the future. So my lazy answer for this question is obviously Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. I mean, this is the book. It is really believed to be the first modern novel. It's such an important text. It's been studied for so long. It's where so much of our literature seems to stem from that I just can't imagine this book disappearing anytime soon. I don't think people are going to wake up one day and be like, you know what, we were really wrong about that one. It's actually not relevant at all to life in general. Let's throw that one away. So I think this book is always going to be important. And not only is it like capital I important in a scholarly way, but it's actually just so much fun and such a pleasure to read, even though it's so old that I can't see this book losing its appeal to any reader who loves storytelling and imagination and creative writing. This is always going to be a treasure. If I had to pick more of a modern classic, like something from the 20th century, I'd have to go with Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I think some of the themes that Kurt Vonnegut explores are still super relevant, especially how messed up a war is and what it can do to your psyche, and I think his writing style is very experimental and interesting, but it's also accessible. So that's why I think a lot of teenagers get into Kurt Vonnegut, because you know, he just gets you thinking, but it's also really easy to turn the pages. So I I can't see Kurt Vonnegut going away anytime soon either. Question number two, pick a recent book which you feel has gone under the radar, but which you're confident will be a future classic. So this one is definitely more wishful thinking on my part than actual confidence, but I really do hope that we are going to be appreciating the works of the amazing Argentinian author Cesar Ayra in the years to come. This is a collection of short stories called The Musical Brain. This just came out in an English translation a few years ago, and these stories just rocked my world. And what I love the most about what Ira does is that he writes this serious literature that does not take itself seriously at all, which I find this combination is just really irresistible in that his works are philosophically dense and experimental and unpredictable, but at the same time they're just so much fun to read. The plots are engaging, they're kind of zany, inspired by pop culture, science fiction, and detective stories. Like, you just don't know what's gonna happen, but I always enjoy the ride when I'm reading Cesar Ira. I hope that Ira is going to gain a lot more recognition in the years to come, because I think he is paving such a new and exciting road for what fiction can do and how exciting it can be, so I really hope that more people are going to be reading him in the future. Question number three, pick a title that won one of your favorite book prizes recently, which you think will still be lauded in 50 years time. So I've actually really been loving some of the winners of the Man Booker Prize recently. The most recent winner, Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders, absolutely floored me. And I think as long as mortality is still something that humans are going to be dealing with, then this book is going to still have a lot of emotional resonance. I also really loved A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. Now this book is a lot more difficult and violent and a little bit inaccessible, but it was just such a cool book that I really just hope that people are going to continue reading this thing. And to give a shout out to the Giller Prize, which recognizes Canadian fiction, I think that 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis is going to be a really important novel in the Canlit world for a while to come. This book addressed so many large questions about life and it's just so poetic and emotional that I can't imagine this book going away anytime soon. Question number four, pick a recent book you haven't read yet, but which you think might become a classic based on reputation alone, such as reviews, responses on Goodreads, booktube recommendations, etc. For this one, I'm going to go with The Seasonal Quartet by Ali Smith. People seem to absolutely love autumn and winter. It's had really excellent critical response as well. So I think as long as Ali Smith can deliver and finish off the series really strong with the final two installments, then I think that this is going to be a major project to be reckoned with, especially since it does address a lot of contemporary issues. I think this could be 
an important text to study um, when it comes to our time period right now. So that would be my guess, but haven't read it yet. I need to get around to that. And the last question is, pick a favorite book that you want to save for your grandchildren or your friend's grandchildren to read in 50 years time. This can be a children's book or a book for adults. Anything you connect with personally that you hope a future generation will connect with too. So I hope as a Canadian that reconciliation goes somewhere and that in 50 years time, the relationships between Canadian settlers and First Nations, Métis and Inuit people is a lot less fractured and toxic than it is right now. So I really hope that people in 50 years won't be dealing with the same kind of issues that we are now. But in case they aren't, I would love to pass along all of my books that deal with Canadian history, um, especially the history that we don't really cover in schools a lot. So I would love to share nonfiction books like The Inconvenient Indian by Thomas King, Unsettling Canada by Arthur Manuel, and Clearing the Plains by James Daszak. These are just such important things to read if you want to understand Canadian history though I really do hope for a brighter future for the future generations. I also think it would be really cool to pass down books that were really important to me during my lifetime. So like passing off a copy of Labyrinths by Borges, a work that I found to be so like mind bending and containing so much wisdom and ideas. I would just love to pass this along to the future generation. Um, and the last book is kind of a joke, but this is a children's book that I illustrated one summer. It's called The Elliot Smith Children's Treasury. So basically one summer I had an office job and I had a lot of free time on my hands. So I basically took some very depressing Elliot Smith lyrics and tried to make a little children's picture book out of it using Microsoft Paint as my sophisticated tool and this was the result. Of course we'd love to share the children's treasury with a younger generation and traumatize them with Elliot Smith's bleak lyrics and my terrible illustrations. Um, this is a little bit what it looks like on the inside. The devil's grip sells you the heart of a blackbird. I'm very literal with my illustrations. Shine on me baby because it's raining in my heart. A distorted reality is now a necessity to be free. I can't prepare for death any more than I already have. It's Christmas time and the needles on the tree, a skinny Santa, is bringing something to me. His voice is overwhelming, his speech is slurred, and I only understand every other word. So yeah, the children's treasury is probably my greatest life accomplishment so far, so I would really love to share that with the future. So that's my take on the Future Classics tag. Thanks for listening to my thoughts on books that matter and that I hope will continue to matter a long time from now. Uh, let me know if you have any answers to these questions in the comments, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.